revolvers. Where do you keep the good ones? This is an 1851 Navy race gun. A race gun is a single action revolver that's been optimized for fanning. And I can fan this gun as hard as I want and as fast as I want without damaging the gun at all and the cylinder doesn't skip if I do my job correctly. Now this is totally different than a cowboy action tuning job or some people even call them cowboy action race jobs. This gun can fire on par with the Bob Munden race gun. That means follow-up shots as fast as five hundredths of a second or even faster that's one twentieth of a second or even faster if the shooter can perform and most people can't do that but but i have shot this gun between five and six uh... between five and six hundredths of a second on, on follow-up shots for a triple shot so let's put it through its paces and i will show you what it can do oh and one more thing the cylinder on this gun is bone stock and it can still shoot that fast i'm going to tell you how in a minute but first, let's do some shooting. You've already seen me, so far, the way I've edited this, do some fanning with it in uh, triple shots. And I'm gonna try something I've never done before with it, and that's shooting for accuracy, longer distance. Um, one thing about this gun is that it, it has, it's a 36 caliber, which means the bore is 375, and the bullets, I'm shooting out of it or 38 special, which are 359. So um, there's a lot of space in there. It's kind of like shooting a musket. You know, the, the rifling is is grabbing the bullet a little bit, but if, if you notice on those targets, it was keyholing going through those targets. Those, bu those bullets are going through sideways and at angles at like five yards. So hitting that big steel, that humanoid type steel, is probably going to be quite difficult. I don't know if I can hit it or not. Let's just try it. Got it once. Not too bad. Too bad for musket. Well, five for five ain't too bad. I'm very happy with that, actually. Uh, they don't look like they're keyhole they almost look like they straightened out at that that's about 20 yards maybe a little over 20. Uh, well maybe they did keyhole i don't know it's kind of a look at the print of the bullet that's hilarious man it did look at that you can it's like a photograph of the the uh what they call those the uh, lube the lube grooves on the bullet look at that that bullet hit sideways 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 amazing that it's that accurate 
can see, hopefully I was holding the camera right there. That's hilarious, man. It just, it's like a profile of a bullet. So that's what I'm dealing with today. Uh, not, not, a, not the epitome of accuracy. Now, the, the right way to do this actually is to get the barrel lined, uh, which is, I've learned about this recently from uh, Snapper. Uh, he, he was telling me what they do is they put the barrel in a lay, they open up the barrel, make the inside of the barrel bigger, then they put a sleeve in it to make it the right size. So that's really what I should do with this. So, but today we are shooting a musket, basically. It's, I, I'm sure the, the rifling is grabbing those bullets a little bit. It's putting a little bit of a spin on, but they got a big wobble too, so. Okay, for what to do next, let's try to do doubles on this block. Let me reload and get set up. Give me just a second. Okay, I'm gonna try something I've never done before, not even in practice. Uh, I'm gonna do a double shot. I'm gonna try to hit two blocks, one with each shot. Never done it before, never tried it. It's a long shot, I doubt I can do it, but I'm also gonna film it in slow motion on that camera so we might get to see the bullets. And if you've watched my previous video on how to do slow motion, I gotta sneak up on it, so be patient. I'm gonna turn on that camera, turn on that camera, and then we're gonna try and do the double, one on each block. Oh, we got it once. Well, I got them both that time. I forgot to turn this camera on, so I hope that one got it. We'll see. So, I bet if the slow-mo can see the bullet clearly, it's keyholing wildly. Because every imprint on that block and on that steel was sideways. I mean, just like it's perfectly sideways. So, just for fun, I'm going to try a... Good old fashioned aim shooting. Make sure I hit the block. See what, see what that looks like. Okay, let's try fan and five on the cardboard a few more times. That was one of my fastest ones. A little low. Dirty. Now, I'm going to show the reloading procedure. Tried this a minute ago and had no problem, so we'll try it again. It's one thing I can tell you about black powder, cap and ball guns, even with a conversion cylinder on them, they're hassle. But if you're into it, you're into it. So first, first step, you knock out the wedge, pull off the barrel, pull off the cylinder. Okay, now Getting these off has been a hassle for me because these are 38 special. I think they're expanding in the chamber because the, the chamber is 375, a full um, 15 thousandths bigger. That's the only thing I can think of. But anyway, you do that. Now, shooting black powder, you kind of have to clean it up frequently, very frequently. I'm not going to show that because if you shoot out smokeless, it wouldn't matter. But so once you get that done, you put in your five. Now the Taylor conversion cylinder, oh, come on, okay, there we go. The Taylor has uh, little windows so you can see where the, uh, the empty one is. By the way, Taylor took really good care of me. When I got this, the firing pins had a problem. The, the, seal, the steel wasn't hardened and they mushroomed out real bad. I gave them a call, they, same day they shipped me out more, more of the pins. And this, the second batch worked great. So Taylor took real good care of me on that. All right, so when you put this together, I, you do have to be cautious what you're doing because you're going to want to drop the bolt out of the way. And, you know, you, you caulk the hammer to do that part way. So you want to uh, be cognizant. I like to put it on empty chamber. So I identify my empty chamber. I'm sliding forward on my empty chamber just in case. And I just slip it like that. Okay, if I were to put that on a loaded chamber and I had my finger here and I was messing around with half cock or something, my thumb slipped, you could fire it through your hand, your finger or something. So pay attention to what you're doing there. And you just put it back together like this, slip the wedge in. 
These wedges, they're a whole thing to themselves. I'm still learning this on the wedge, but I give it about 10 light taps until it's nice and snug. And you're ready to go. So that's the, the loading procedure with the Taylor conversion. Okay, a minute ago I said I was going to explain why this gun with a, with a, a cylinder that's bone stock can shoot as fast as a Bob Munden race gun. The reason is because this this cylinder in particular comes with, with notches that are 45 thousandths deep from the factory. So there was no additional machining required on the cylinder itself. But to make it a race gun, the bolt had to have recesses in the top and the side in just the right place that allows the bolt to efficiently slide into place. In addition to that, um, it, has a, it has a coil handspring, which is an upgrade from the 1851 through mid 20th century design of single action revolvers. The coil handspring just allows the, the hand to function with the least amount of pressure and be efficient. So it's really, really slick, but it, it operates. And the other thing is the mainspring has a set screw right there that allows me to adjust it right on the range, more powerful, less powerful. So I can, I can set the mainspring up to be reliable, bust all the caps, but not be excessively heavy. So those things combined allow this gun to be a race gun with a cylinder that's bone stock. Well, that is putting my 51 Navy race gun through its paces. It's a quirky gun. It's not as much fun to shoot as my Great Western II, to be honest with you. The loading procedure is so long. And uh, shooting black powder today, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I got to clean it over and over again. But a 51 Navy race gun is possible, and you've seen it today. So thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next video. If you like this video, please share it. Uh, like it too, you know, uh, subscribing doesn't even matter on YouTube. So just sharing it helps me if you share it. So thanks for tuning in. I'll see you on the next one.